Okay, uh, Nelly has started live stream. We are on YouTube and I'm going to turn on our, re our recording and I'm going to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello everyone and welcome to another great session in the series Best of Evil. Within TESOL 2022, Computer Assisted Language Learning Intersection and EVO 2022 are presenting Best of Evo 2022. I'm Sanya Bojinovic, one of the coordinators, and I'm your moderator together with Nagla Salem and Rose Bard. And in this session, we are presenting three, three um, different sessions, three different five-week sessions from this year's edition of EVO Electronic Village Online 2022. And they are CFR, versus assessment, classroom-based research for professional development, and mentoring teacher research. Nagla, right. it's your turn to present our first session for this meeting, and that is classroom-based research for professional development. Thank you very much, Sanya. So uh, on behalf of the moderating team, we have Ruben, uh, Ruben Masai, and we have Mariana Serra. We're looking forward to hearing about your session. You can start now, go ahead. Adela, can you share uh, your screen with the slides? Yes, of course. Thank you. Uh, all right. Mm -hmm. Here we are. Um, all right. Let's see. Can you see okay. my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. And while we are waiting for Mariana to share the screen, could you please, everyone, write your full name and the country uh, where you are uh, joining us from in the chat so we know where we have participants from. Thank you. Mariana, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very, very much. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity and this uh, invitation. Um, my name is Mariana Serra and my partner is Ruben Massey. Both of us are from Argentina and we have been the lead moderators of Classroom-Based Research for Professional Development, EVO 2022. Welcome Ruben, how are you today? Well, fine. Uh, happy to be here sharing this uh, experience with you all. Yes, and also um, eager to learn about uh, the other workshops as well. Yes, of course. Ruben, I would like you to tell us and to tell the audience too about the aims classroom-based research for professional development uh, workshop this year, which the aims were, and also to talk about what it was about, briefly, about the synchronous meetings, mm -hmm. the platform, mm -hmm. etc. Thank you. Over to you. Okay. Well, thank you, Mariana. <clears throat> um, well, classroom-based research for professional development is a, a five week long uh, workshop as part of the EVO sessions. And um, it is well, as the, as the name suggests, is about uh, guiding teachers to, to experiment, to experience research in their own classrooms. Uh, it has to do precisely with that. And it is one of the main aims of the workshop to uh, guide, to scaffold teachers in the process of researching uh, from uh, identifying a topic until <clears throat> the final outcomes when they present and we, when they disseminate their research uh, results findings. Um, so um, uh, we guide teachers basically, but it's not only guiding, it's also interacting with them and we as lead moderators and the mentors in our teams that you can see here in the slide, uh, Mariana is sharing, um, we also learn from them. So it's learning from both sides. Yes, not only the teachers participating who are learning, but we are also learning from our uh, mentors roles as well. And um, so Mariana, could you describe the workshop uh, briefly or shall I? Um, um, it's up to you. Do it if okay. you want. 
<laughs> okay, well, um, the, we used uh, Canvas as the platform for asynchronous uh, tasks and activities and interaction and uh, Zoom uh, for our weekly meetings um, um, yeah, in our uh, sessions, uh, live sessions, I mean. Um, uh, well, teachers, as I mentioned before, teachers participated in different uh, activities, tasks related to the different stages of the research uh, process, uh, from their explorations, uh, well, then researching their own, experimenting, implementing in their own classrooms, until the final stage when uh, most of them presented their uh, outcomes and findings. I say most of them because um, uh, depending on the region and the country where teachers are from, uh, in some cases, well, and in the case of Argentina, for example, we are uh, uh, we have summer holidays at schools, so we uh, we are not in contact with uh, students until March, uh, and the, and the workshop is January February. So that's why some teachers uh, presented their research plans, but uh, now they are going to implement uh, their well their action research, and that's why. We decided this year to uh, continue being in contact with participants uh, throughout the year, precisely because of this, because some of them uh, were not able to implement their uh, explorations and research, and we want to be in contact with them in case they need more uh, I mean, uh, help or guidance in relation to, to, to their research. Um, Okay, um, well, the webinars uh, were uh, once a week, yes, yeah, on Saturdays. And <clears throat> what was different this year was that um, we invited some experts in the area, but we also wanted to invite uh, teachers who have experienced uh, exploratory action research or classroom-based research, and uh, we want them to share their, their experiences as well. So. This was, um, I mean, this was good for us. We are very happy and, and participants were happy, um, yes, for listening to, to their peers, their colleagues, yes, who have gone through uh, similar experiences uh, in, in the area of exploratory action research. Um, okay, so uh, Mariana, is there anything else I'm forgetting that was new in this? No, uh, no, new, your, your edition? description was very clear when I, I would like to ask to, to add just to add that um, we had some uh, other innovative aspects. Uh, for example, uh, well, Ruben mentioned our uh, asynchronous meetings. Well, there was a lot of interaction during um, those meetings in breakout rooms, um, as Ruben said, between the guest speakers and our participants. And um, we used, for example, thinking routines uh, in order to anticipate the topics during the online sessions. Uh, we anticipated the topics that the participants would be dealing with during uh, the following weeks. Yes. And uh, another innovative aspect was a meeting on February the 6th uh, we um, had and it was called Mentees and Mentors Voices. We had the great pleasure of having uh, Dr. Richard Smith and Sedento Yan, she was always with, with us, of course, who were uh, providing, who were giving the mentoring teacher research workshop. Uh, we had a meeting together and um, they were invited and their participants were invited too. So their mentors and mentors-to-be um, had a mentoring dialogue with our participants. Our participants uh, shared their uh, research topics, um, their data collection tools, and intended um, plan of analyzing the data. So it was um, very, it was the first time we had a meeting like that, and it was um, a meeting point between mentors and participants, our 
participants, teacher researchers. It was a fantastic opportunity for their participants mm -hmm. and for our participants. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, all right. Um, well, Ruben, uh, you talked about the length of our workshop. Um, and do you remember exactly how many participants uh, we um, had this year? Mm, well, um, uh, in, there were uh, 223 participants yes. enrolled. Uh, mm -hmm. As usual, um, most of them are active, but some of them are not. But we try to, well, as one of the challenges, uh, well, is that not precisely how to, to keep them motivated so that they can continue, yes, with, with interaction during the, the whole uh, workshop. And well, um, and it is always, uh, I, I, I say it's fantastic, yes, meeting uh, teachers, colleagues from different corners of the world, yes, from countries such as, uh, well, from Latin America, um, Peru, for example, Colombia, um, Ecuador, um, from India, Nepal, Vietnam, uh, Nigeria, um, well, uh, Russia, well, different in Mexico as well. So um, it, it, it's always a great to, to interact with a well, colleagues from these different cultures and countries, and but with with us a, a common core, a common thing. Yes, we have that is the well. As I always say, that that passion passion for for teaching and, and sharing. Yes, the, the the issues. Yes, concerning the our teaching practices. Um, Yes. Okay, and um, well, let's share, uh, Mariana, uh, something about the Roundup uh, session that is coming soon, very, very soon. Yes, um, of course, Ruben, it will uh, take place uh, this Saturday, March the 26th, and uh, there will be a uh, presentations, uh, different participants uh, will present their uh, research studies. There will be interaction uh, with um, uh, the audience uh, because there will be Q&A um, uh, uh, sections for our participants to ask questions, share their doubts, yes, after each presentation with the presenters. And there will be um, interaction between our mentors and the audience. So I think it will be a very a rewarding experience, another rewarding experience. And I would like to add that another interesting aspect we um, included this year was that even though during the um, synchronous meetings, um, there were Q&A um, sections after each presentation, we designed and we opened Q&A sections on canvas. That is to say, um, uh, we wanted, yes, the guest speakers to go on interacting with our participants during the week in relation to their uh, presentations during synchronous meetings. So uh, they were, as we said with Ruben, the, there was a lot of interaction this year. Yes, that was uh, uh, one of our successes. Yes. Okay, and Ruben, is there anything else you would like to share uh, with the audience and in, in relation to um, our future plans too? Sorry, Mariana, I had a problem with the connection and I couldn't listen the very last part, <laughs> your okay. question. Uh, yes, okay, sorry about no this. Problem. Yes, it's very stormy in Argentina. I think yes. that it is mm -hmm. stormy in uh, where Ruben uh, yes, lives. Yes, it, it is. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, would you like to share our future plans with the audience? <clears throat> well, uh, we have some uh, draft of future plans because we have to continue discussing with Mariana and also with the, the, the mentors and the Yes, and some of the participants to get some ideas from them as well. But uh, well, the idea is to continue um, moderating and yes, and yeah, the the the, the classroom-based research uh, workshop, and also to try to 
to well to face the challenges and how we can uh, solve them yes uh, to improve uh, the interaction uh, and also to innovate in some way in some areas we don't know exactly how yet but we we uh, we would like to to change some of the the aspects related to the to the workshop which are okay of course but we we want to well to improve things yes um Bailey, we, we were thinking with mariana that uh, one idea could be to invite apart from inviting participants uh, individually um also to to get um for example coordinators of schools of the of the english departments for instance uh to 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 enroll in the workshop together as a team and work together as a team as in, in, in an institutional way maybe so this, this is an idea we don't know if, if it's uh, it's going to work out but uh, this is an idea we have and also to well to continue develop mainly to to get uh, participants motivated and and guide them and well so that they they are able to 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 follow the workshop and complete all this, the, the the activities proposed yes so so that's it basically uh well some ideas and and we always have the constant support of well here's seven richard and, and uh, ashley and all other uh, colleagues who are always uh, helping us yes uh, with, with the workshop as well so thank you all <laughs> Yes, yes, um, so true, uh, Ruben. Uh, Richard and Seden are always by our sides. Uh, okay, sometimes we have ideas with Ruben, send them emails, and we always get their uh, responses and suggestions and comments. Yes, this year with Ruben, we asked uh, Richard and Seden if some of their mentors uh, could um, guide or accompany our participants. And they said, yes, of course. And uh, some of their mentors are still working with our participants. Yes, that is, we are going to have um, the final round uh, of event this Saturday, but uh, their mentors will continue working with our participants because, as Ruben said, maybe their projects are longer or they were on holidays. Yes, thinking about maybe uh, a future event, a future conference, who knows? Yes, uh, for them to share their, their outcomes. Yes, and as Ruben said, we are always thinking about implementing changes, always. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, okay. Ruben, would you like to say any other thing? Uh, no. Uh, mm -hmm. th thank yes, thank you again for this invitation and for letting us share in our experience uh, last uh, uh, in the last edition of the workshop. Thank you very yes. much. Thank you very much. Best of EO uh, 2022 team, uh, Richard Seden, and also um, all uh, our great team of mentors, because mm -hmm. we uh, have ideas with, with uh, Ruben, but uh, they are the ones who suggest, who add comments, who are mm -hmm. always there, yes, take parts in the synchronous events and work on Canvas too. So we are a great team. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Ruben. That's wonderful. Thank you very much, Mariana and Ruben. Uh, if, uh, are there any questions, Rose, in the chat? No questions so far. No questions so far. OK. Um, I think we can start with the next session and maybe we'll have more questions towards the end. So our next session is uh, mentoring teacher research and um, our presenters are Richard Smith and Sidan Tuyan. Okay, why? Well, right, I'm Richard Smith. Um, very nice to see you all. Very nice to hear from here, Mariana and uh, Ruben. And I'm, I'm together here with, with Sedan. Are you there, Sedan? Hey, Richard. Hello, everyone. It's, Great. Sedan's uh, from it's Turkey. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. Shall we start introducing ourselves? Yeah, go ahead, Sedan. Yeah. Well, um, hello again. Uh, I am Sedan Tuyan, Eraldemir Tuyan, actually, uh, from Turkey. 
uh, I live in the southern part. Uh, I work at Chai University as a uh, as a teacher educator, and I've been mentoring for teacher research. Um, uh, since 2014, um, since the time I met uh, Richard and um, Kenan Dikiletas uh, at some conferences in, in, in Turkey. Uh, well, since then, I have uh, mentored uh, different cohorts of teachers, uh, language teachers in, in my previous workplace uh, in in-service programs. Then I started mentoring senior students at the ELT department uh, for more than three years. Yeah, so I love being a mentor. Um, I like um, empowering, inspiring uh, teacher candidates right now. It's another aspect that uh, feels great. Richard? Yeah, thanks, Adan. Um, well, I've been involved with, I'm, I'm teaching at the University of Warwick in the UK. Um, and for the last 20 years, I suppose, I've been involved with um, helping students and, and later teachers to to research their classrooms to, to to inquire into their classrooms and we asked we asked actually to be together with Mariana and Ruben because they are very much our sister or brother um, Evo and um, and so then mentioned uh, Kenan Dikiletash who started the classroom based research Evo together with Asla Sailam a number of years ago and I think the Evo Evo in classroom based research has been very important in spreading uh, ideas, spreading the the idea that we we strongly believe in that teachers can find a lot of practical value in researching their classrooms, and I was involved with it, and um, I've also been involved very much with teachers in India and Nepal um, in helping helping mentors to mentor teacher research. So I was involved with some British Council projects, which first started me um, reflecting a lot about what does it mean to be a mentor of teacher research. And you've, you've seen how with Marianne and, and Ruben, um, they, meant that they mentioned the importance of the mentors that, they, that work with the teachers. And this is, this, is, this is important, that teachers can't necessarily start doing teacher research just on their own. They can, you know, many, many do, but it's really important in their first steps in, in, te in research in the classrooms that they have a mentor, have somebody to guide them not only the EVO coordinators, but they have somebody that who can have a dialogue with them. And you saw how many good mentors there are in their, in their EVO. And what we are interested in, in our EVO, which we started, we first had it um, in 2020, together with Sedan, based on our experience of, of helping mentors or de developing mentors to mentor teacher research. Um, yeah, how can we maybe increase the number of people who feel able to facilitate teacher research because we 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 strongly believe in that from our experience and practice in the value of teachers doing research so how can we spread the this how can we spread this and i think the important thing is that we are helping teachers maybe who've done teacher research themselves to become to become, become mentors it's often often happens doesn't it that somebody who's experienced it they want to share that they want to help others to do teacher research we're just um taking this a step further in the EVO and trying to um, trying to see how we can help that process. So, as I said, we did it, 20, we did it uh, in 2020, and that was just before the pandemic, of course. So th lots of things happened. <laughs> anyway, well, let's, let's talk about the 2022 one, and we're going to go back again later to what's happened between 2020 and 2022. So, um, why do we have this EVO? Because we believe in the value of teacher research and we believe in the value of helping more, more people to become mentors of teacher research. Who is it for then? You can see a few ideas about who it might be for. Um, what do, we, had a, we have a syllabus. We have a kind of um, week by week um, set of topics. These are areas that we know um, are difficult for teachers and therefore important for mentors to know how to help teachers with. So these are the areas that we've identified really that teachers find difficult in doing teacher research. And so week by week we want to discuss these topics with, with potential mentors or with experienced mentors 
And that was basically the syllabus, week by week. But going back to um, what we did this, this time, we had six online meetings, so over a period of, of uh, five weeks. Um, that was five, actually, that, sorry, five weeks. That was five um, on every Saturday or Sunday, I think. And then we had one bonus session, which Mariana and Ruben mentioned, and they, they organized, and that was really good. Uh, our participants got together with their participants, and our participants were mentoring their participants. That was really interesting. I don't know, maybe the first time it's been done with EVO, but two EVOs come together like that. Um, we use Zoom, of course, for our, for our meetings. Um, for the participants to post a plan. And we'll see some of those plans, if we have time, at the end. To, of actually planning to mentor a group or, or, or a single teacher. So that's what our aim was, that we would inspire or encourage people to, to get a group together that they would mentor to do teacher research. We had 85 participants um, from different countries that you can see. We used groups.io for, and we, it's the same group that we used two years ago. Um, this is what it looks like. It's quite good. We, we could um, have our weekly activities inside here with links. We could have a uh, message board, which we used, where, where the messages go directly to people's email accounts. Um, and we could also upload files, actually, which we did. Um, some, some people wanted to share their reflections, their, their reports, their research about mentoring. So it, it, it um, was, was good for us. Um, unfortunately, groups.io doesn't uh, enable us to have all of these things for free anymore. But it did two years ago. So what we decided to do was to carry on with the group that we had already from last from two years ago, and just to, to join people, join new people into the same group. And we warned those people who already, you know, probably forgot that they were members of this, that, there, that a lot of new people were going to join. And uh, we said, you can leave if you like. Actually, very few, very few people left. So, um, And as I said, we used um, Zoom for meetings. And that, that, but that aspect that we are joining new people to an existing group, membership group that we, 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 we met, uh, we got together two years ago, I think it relates strongly to our aim of building a community. And I think that's a very important thing about EVO generally, that it's not just a course, it's not just a syllabus where you're giving content, it's to building a community. I think that's true of all EVO experiences and it's very much the case with us. What actually happened wasn't it uh, to them that um, we had experienced mentors already there yeah. uh, who joined in sometimes. We also had um, exper new experienced mentors joining us. So we had a mixture this time of experienced mentors and novice mentors which made it quite a different uh, feeling from, from previously. But that was okay with us I think so then we, we just felt it, we, we kind of um, felt it was more about keeping this community going and building this community than actually having a, a course. I felt and we have all... grown, Richard, hugely since the time we have started. And we yeah. have also started collaborating with our sister Evo, yeah. uh, Mariana and Ruben. And yeah. it's great uh, to see that uh, the community is growing and yeah. um, making use of all uh, uh, contribution to yeah. the development of teachers all over the world. It's yeah. it's a great uh, pleasure to see and you know experience to see that as well because yeah. our efforts worked and people uh, kept yeah. uh, researching their classrooms and making use of uh, what they gain out of the, this experience and sharing their gains with their students. Yeah. We've got a couple of examples later on about what happened between the first EVO and this EVO to show that that community is developing. But first, maybe send over to you some outcomes of 2022 EVO. Uh, well, thank you, Richard. Um, our uh, participants uh, 
liked the idea of uh, being a community of mentor, uh, mentors because there was such a collegiality among us and we were we could talk about uh, our uh, work related issues our challenges um, freely comfortably as it was a community we this was like a uh, professional friendship and uh, uh, our participants uh, felt comfortable related to that and enjoyed that collegial uh, at atmosphere, I, uh, we can say. And they also reported that they have strengthened the, their knowledge of mentoring and um, also it, 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 it uh, was inspiring for them to, to become a part of this group uh, with experienced and beginning mentors, especially this year, we, we had newcomers, um, beginner mentors, uh, and they have also grown uh, more experienced uh, by uh, sharing, exchanging experiences with the more experienced uh, mentors. This was an opportunity actually. Uh, also, they they liked our uh, the sharing of this uh, resources for mentoring, uh, and this they also could initiate a community of practice, and uh, they could also uh, reflect on uh, their learning or their challenges uh, during the process uh, in group Dotaya, and. Uh, uh, they also said uh, that, it, that it was nice from reading others' co comments, again, uh, shared in group okay. uh, which was happy. Uh, and we also got uh, other nice feedback. Uh, for example, it's uh, such great to read, I felt at home. Uh, it sounds uh, that uh, our participants uh, felt comfortable uh, um, and enjoyed their learning uh, with us as a community. And it was related also to constructing knowledge together, uh, which was also really helpful for professional development. And um, also, uh, as this was a mentoring uh, EVO, uh, they also had uh, some insight, ex uh, gained insights on how to uh, assist teachers in conducting research, because in our break uh, breakout room uh, talks, you know, uh, we had the chance to exchange our insights, our experiences, and it was, great, you know, about uh, understanding uh, the nature of the challenges different mentors face. And this was a source of inspiration for others because sometimes, you know, when you feel stuck about uh, guiding a group of teachers and there you have a huge group of mentors all together, very open to share what they know. Uh, within this uh, at home like community so uh, basically we enjoyed uh, our sunday sessions our sessions were was on sunday richard it, yeah. it was a family day you know normally yeah, uh, but it, as it was a family gathering like we, we met on uh, sundays uh, yeah maybe maybe that's something to change for the future <laughs> <laughs> i don't know nobody yeah. complained yeah. no Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Linda. I just wanted to mention that um, in relation to that, that um, for the for the syllabus, we did we did use um, chapters or we we referred resources, basically activities. We referred to this book, um, but but that that was, that came out of experience in Nepal and India about helping helping teachers to helping people to become mentors of teacher research. But actually, the whole the whole point of the Evo when we started it two years ago is also to build on that knowledge it's an, it's a new area it's an area that hasn't been very much written about and that's just a starting point that book is just a starting point so part of our i think what the evo has been about has been constructing new knowledge but with experienced mentors coming together to discuss um issues that they find in mentoring 
And I would say that this time it was much more like that. It was less um, sort of a syllabus, a course, but and more a kind of the, the meetings anyway, the time for issues in mentoring to be discussed. I think partly that it wasn't just what we intended. It was because there were this a number of experienced mentors. Uh, it, and um, it was also facilitated by the fact that because of the pandemic, we all know how to use uh, Zoom much better. And we can use the breakout rooms and we used the breakout rooms in a way we hadn't done before in two ways. I think one was to have people discussing issues in groups or pairs, but also to actually practice mentoring. And even if they were experienced or not experienced, we were all uh, treating each other, uh, talking to each other, mentoring one another. We could we could say peer coaching uh, about our recent teaching experience. Exactly. It was a good, that it was a good, a mm -hmm. good way to practice, wasn't it? It was yeah. um, peer coaching helped us um, mm. to, to improve our um, mentoring skills as well. Yeah. Like we practiced uh, the, the communication uh, strategies used by mentors uh, yeah. uh, for scaffolding, uh, for uh, better yeah. guiding the teachers to, to understand yeah. their challenges. So at the end, we, um, we asked uh, uh, participants to upload their mentoring plans uh that was the the sort of product or the outcome and so that's what um quite a few of them have done and um uh for example ellie in ecuador is, is mentoring a teacher in latvia there was a lot of this international uh mentoring that comes out of this evo different mariana, parts of the world oh yeah, yeah. Ma mariana is cooperating with uh, anna in spain um and um they're together uh, mentoring a teacher in Kurdistan, amazing. And I know they're they are both also helping with um, a group in China, uh, yes. who is as uh, I think we have yeah. one minute left. Uh, oh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's right. a great map, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Well, we just wanted to mention um, two things that have happened since uh, last time, since the Evo in twenty twenty. Would you just like to be briefly mention this together with the Evo participants? This to it's kind of evidence or examples of how we think this is developing as a community. Yes. So then do you want to mention, just briefly mention this? Enhancement mentoring. Well, yeah. Richard invited um, us, Mariana, uh, Eli Bekesh, uh, and myself. During the pandemic, uh, we uh, tried to empower <laughs> one another and developed uh, an approach uh, based on success uh, then it was our first uh, cycle. We invited um, the, 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 the mentors in our uh, community uh, from to 2020. And uh, we, uh, you know, introduced the idea of, of enhancement mentoring to those group of teachers. And, you know, we got feedback and improved the approach and, uh, the, our understanding gets stronger and uh, we had a nice work and we had a publication out of that and we we developed some templates you know uh, everyone who is interested in this kind of mentoring uh, can also use our model um, and um, have teachers uh, conduct teacher research based on their successful experiences. Uh, yeah. that, that was a different aspect of, of our mentoring for enhancement. Yeah, and um, you know, we always we always wanted to get back together again with people, and, and we didn't never expected that that's the way we would be getting back together with people from the Evo. But that's how it developed that we did re-engage re with Evo participants from 2020 in this new way coming out of the pandemic. So it's an example also of, um, of community building, but also of how we are constructing new knowledge uh, around the new area of mentoring, of mentoring teacher research. Of course, mentoring has got its own literature, its own background. Teacher research has got a lot of literature, but this bringing these two, two together is what we've, we've been doing. Another way, very quick, very quickly, um, that something that happened in 2021 was Coming out of the, well, we haven't come out of the pandemic, of course, but the sense of wanting to have something hopeful to look forward to, we decided together with the IATFL Research Special Interest Group to 
plan a conference that we used to have uh, in Turkey. That's where I first met her then. And sometimes in Argentina, that's uh, how I met uh, Ruben and Mariana. We decided to put it online. And uh, we bravely um, had a Zoom com Zoom based conference. The way that we organized this was we got in touch with Evo, mainly Evo mentors from, from the Evo, saying in about May 2021, would you like to get a group together who would, would do teacher research and mentor them uh, from May until December? And they did. And the result was we had this conference and we've, we, we've made a um, book out of it online. Uh, and so you have group, mentor groups, basically, from different parts. So we hope that this will, we'll hope we'll do this again this year. But well, actually, this is a good thing. We, we start with Evo at this now, then we, then we maybe have monthly meetings from May onwards. And we, we plan, and the Eye of Research League has already agreed they're going to have this conference again. And hopefully, Mariana and Ruben, your participants, also mentored by your moderators, will want to take part in this as well. So thank you very much to everybody okay. for listening. What Hi, an amazing you. presentation. <laughs> so then, and Ruben, there are a few questions. There are a few questions. Uh, one of the questions is from our participants in this session, how they can become a part of this uh, group mentor, uh, of mentors. Uh, right. Um, I'm going to, well, we have a Facebook group, and that's the best way at the moment. Mm -hmm. to... Could you please share the link? Yeah, sure, sure. And we'll, and, uh, we'll, uh, so, are you going so, to share the link to the slides so that people can learn more about your work from the slides? Read for the links. Okay, we'll 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 put that onto our um, we'll put the slides onto our website. So let okay. me put um, the, the mentoring dots. Uh, so I'll just mm -hmm. put the link to that. Could yeah. you write the link in the chat, yeah. or maybe? And then uh, the Facebook. I'll put the Facebook group yes. as you as you're speaking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And, uh, and uh, 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 yes. Actually, yeah. sorry, you can okay. you can get everything through this link. Uh, it's mentoring tr.weebly.com. Okay. Uh, so the Weebly you. link and through that link people can get every other link yeah. they want. Yeah. Thank you. And there is there was a question about uh, the platform. Uh, why didn't you use Canvas instead of Groups? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I didn't I, I don't think we knew enough about it. Okay. Yeah. So it, the uh, question was, uh, is there a reason? So mm. that answers it. Thank you. Um, and uh, the question from Nelly, uh, did the issues vary from country to country or were they basically the same, the same issues? Oh, uh, we always, I, I said, and do you want to answer that question? Well, uh, it, it was also um, nice to, to, to feel confirmed uh, hearing about other teachers or teacher educators similar concerns worries especially we were very supportive uh, to one another in the community about those emerging issues during the the pandemic so uh, more or less um, teachers had similar uh, challenges uh, related to their context uh, regardless of their country yeah, we always find this with teachers, actually, that they should, all, of course, culturally and everything is different. Every classroom is different, but, but, but sharing similar issues across countries. I think Mariana Rubin might agree, but we find, find the same with mentoring. So yeah. it's, it's amazing sort of international, you know, um, well, yeah, we do find teachers, the issues. That share. Teachers workload, you know, teachers. Uh, yeah. Burnout issues. Teachers, um, they, they were more or less similar. Yes, and it's uh, uh, it's amazing when they realize that uh, mm. teachers all over the world have the same concerns. They can believe it. Yes, yeah, even yeah. though we are far away, okay, from one yeah. another, the concerns, the issues are similar. Yeah. Yes, so true, Sudan and, and Richard. Mm -hmm. All right, Thank great. Fun. Thank you all so much. So now it's time for our third presentation. So we have uh, Maha Hassan uh, on, on behalf of her co-moderator, Aya el Wakil, and she's going to tell us about CEFR versus assessment. Go ahead, Maha. Yeah, hello, everyone. Uh, can I share my screen? Yes, uh, please, Maha. 
Yeah, uh, because uh, Richard is still there, yeah? No, no, you can share now. Welcome, oh. Maha, you can share your screen. We are ready yeah. for your presentation. Oh, here it is. Is it clear enough? <clears throat> yes, yes, we can see it. Okay, uh, this is uh, a, a new outlook for assessment. I have uh, been doing this uh, as a kind of a comparative study between Sefer, the new Sefer revisions, and um, uh, the, uh, the old Sefer, uh, and how to use it in assessment, especially after the pandemic. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot to introduce myself before I started. I'm Hassan, I come from Egypt. I'm a teacher trainer, educational consultant, and I've also, I'm also the founder of uh, and CEO of Teaching ESL Hub in Egypt. Uh, I'm also the newsletter editor for Ayatafel Ibsen Sid. I'm also um, a member at large at uh, the uh, is for uh, for of TESL, the TESL is for uh, improving writing uh, or writing as a second language. Um, so uh, here the whole idea started a few years ago when uh, they started uh, revising the Sefer, the old Sefer, and they changed it, it from the old info, uh, from the old uh, one uh, to uh, the new one. <clears throat> from uh, 2001, they started making researches with different teachers around Europe, and they wanted to uh, improve the Sefer not to be used only by uh, people who are setting curricula and different um, um, uh, course books and uh, exams only. Uh, they wanted to make it much wider, and they wanted to, help, to use it to help teachers. So they um, divide the year before, at the very beginning, the um, Sefer was divided into the three uh, basic categories of A1, A2, basic speaker, B1, B2, independent speaker, C1, C2, and proficient speaker. And so they, uh, when they wanted to make the new revisions of the Sefer, they uh, decided to make interviews with different teachers around Europe. And the teachers said that uh, they found difficulty in fitting students in these different four, uh, six scales. And they wanted to um, help the teachers uh, to uh, uh, use it in teaching, not only for exams and course books. And uh, so they said, the teacher said, sometimes it's difficult to fit a student in A only or B only or C only. So uh, they started revising the whole thing and they came up with a new uh, Sefer companion uh, or the new companion volume, which started uh, working uh, by the end of 2017, 2018. And since the time I've been using the Sefer uh, in comparison to assessment, how can we use the Sefer to help teachers to assess their own students? And at the same time, how to help, uh, how to help the, the students themselves to assess their work and see how far they are developing with the learning of the language. Uh, if you'd like to take a look quickly at what uh, I've done with the EVO, I've done it with the EVO. This is the fifth year for me with the EVO to uh, do this um, um, uh, this course. Uh, I, I, I even, uh, as usual, I introduced the Sefer and the skills, uh, these, the skills, the old skills, and uh, with the new skills, they started working like this. They added uh, a, a1, pre-A1, and then they left A1, and they added A1 plus. Uh, for the A2, they left it as it is, and then they added A2 plus. They had B1, and they added B1 plus. They had B2, and they added B2 plus, and they left C1 and C2 together. Uh, these were the basic scales according to which the, the, the publishers and the different people around the world started putting, uh, having a new and different perspective of the Sefer. And this is how I tried to help teachers to get into this and uh, use it for uh, assessment. So how did they change the descriptors? In the past, the descriptors were mainly concerned with the four language skills only, but with the new descriptors, they changed it like this. Descriptors means they explained how the teachers can use all these to assess their own students. In the past, they were just concerned with the listening, speaking, reading, writing. Now they gave it a different perspective. Sanya, how much time do I have? Baha, uh, 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes, thank you. Yes. So they gave it, thank you. So they gave it this outlook 
and they concentrated on the idea that teachers should work on different uh, with the students on different um, uh, on activities and uh, concentrate on group work and pair work because this is the most important thing and the most important thing is that they help the students to give their opinions discuss their opinions in class and at the same time be able to uh, use it to speak about their personal info personal information personal experiences uh, concerning the different topics that they study at school and this is the outcome. Uh, so uh, with the EVO course uh, or the EVO session, I divided it into the five weeks as usual. I put the five, uh, the, the very first week we discussed the, uh, the, this very in, uh, introduction, early introduction. And then I discussed with them the receptive activities and how they uh, discussed it uh, with the new SEFA revisions and the productive activities and asked the teachers to try to apply it to lessons that they have already given to their own students, or and uh, some of them have already had experience with the suffer, they had an idea. So I asked them to revise one of the old lessons and see if they have applied all the new suffer developments or not, and how they can develop it and make it more interactive for their own students. Uh, but uh, again, with the uh, second week, I asked them with the uh, interaction interaction activities uh, which were uh, stressed so much by uh, the the new safer revisions how to make the classes interactive using group work where work online and so on interaction together with the mediation mediation means the idea of what kind of medium are you going to use as a teacher to work with your own students are you going to use a course book are you going to use a comprehension sheet are you going to use a video um uh, what we call a, a, a listening piece and so on any kind what kind of medium are you going to use and they stress the importance of the media and the choice should be very accurate by the teacher and how to help the students to get through all this in order to be able to speak more in class and become more interactive by the way it's over there it's on the website of the, the council of europe it's all free and um, it's very very helpful uh, so uh, I, 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 I helped them, I, I gave them examples of the different uh, descriptors, how they were set in the new separate revisions and uh, like this. And then uh, I asked them, I gave them another idea about uh, uh, there were, uh, I'm sorry, they are not here, about the plurilingualism and pluriculturalism and how they, they how these were stressed with the new set revisions and how they were very important and they also stressed with the new set revisions the online teaching and how to develop the online teaching again we had two different weeks where i introduced the idea of the online plurilingualism and pluriculturalism and again ask the teachers to apply uh, these to their own lessons and try to discuss it with us uh, how they find out that they can uh, these can help them to get better with their own teaching again we had another week where we discussed the parallel project set by the new self revisions it's for young learners where it was divided for teachers who taught uh, ages seven to ten and people uh, teachers who taught uh, ages 11 to 15 11 to 15 and i gave them example of the descriptors again and i uh, gave them suggestions how to make uh, assessment templates for themselves as teachers to assess their own students and at the same time there were a descript descriptors here a lot of descriptors here where the teachers can use to make very simple assessment assessment templates for their own students where they can uh, they can uh, assess themselves how far they have developed with the learning of the language so they can take more responsibility of the learning and so uh, this would help the teacher uh, uh, to see far how they are going to be more interactive in class and if the activities proposed by the teacher are they suitable enough for the teacher or not so these were the different descriptors of the parallel project again it's already free over there and i gave them examples of the different assessment templates set by uh, again on the website of the sefer some of them are very simple for very young learners some are very complicated for the much older ones i have already tried some of them with my own students even university students they were very 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 helpful because they help the students to uh, take responsibility think uh, why am i learning the language is it uh, is it a nice and helpful to study the language i want to be interested more how can i be more interested in learning the language and the teacher herself or himself would revise the different 
um, activities given in class are they suitable for the students or not what kind of discussions should we uh, take on uh, in class these are the different kinds again you can find them the links are at the very end and then i we work for uh, two other weeks on the idea of online assessment tools. We introduced the different tools and I gave them instructions step by step how to work with these tools for speaking. And I asked them to go and have their own accounts over there and try to make lessons over there uh, on these uh, different websites and try to work uh, on them if there is a chance to work with their own students and give them, uh, give us uh, back their ideas how far they were successful with this. Uh, Voxel, uh, Flipgrid, I'm sorry. Flipgrid, World Wall, Voxel, all these are for free. Accent Tempore is the only one which is not free. Uh, World Wall, I wanted to apply the World Wall with you, but the time is very, very short. Uh, we have to, to run a lot. Uh, again, with the for the assessment, this there is this Cambridge Assessment English. This is a whole file over there online. It's very, very helpful. It has been set uh, for um, about two, two years now by the Cambridge Assessment English, where uh, they introduce different items for assessment that can help teachers you can choose whichever whichever assessment uh, that can help you uh, you can make your own assessment even out of it and this was very helpful with uh, lots of teachers and students and they have already set assessment using pictures using videos and so on so i introduced this and asked them to work with it as well the listening this is one of the wonderful uh, websites i introduced for listening the reading as well uh, uh, together with Socrative uh, Quizlet and uh, Quizalize, these ones are really helpful and very interactive and nice. And they can uh, we can train our own students how to work on these. And then by the end of the term or the year or the month, we can uh, help them to make very short exams on them. And uh, we can help them to go on using them uh, as a kind of work online, which can save us a lot of time. Uh, also, I introduced different ideas for teaching, for teaching writing, yes, and I suggested uh, Grammarly and Beta. Beta was introduced also by Cambridge. Um, uh, you can ask the students if you don't have time to go over there, write, uh, they, they give them topics, you write the topics over, uh, on, they write on the topic, and they uh, submit and uh, the website is going to correct it for them. If the sentence is right, it's going to be green. Uh, if it's half and half, it's going to be orange. If it's wrong, it's going to be red. So the students have the chance to go back, correct it, and come back again and uh, submit it once more to be recorrected once more. There is only right, there is also, sorry, writing for uh, FCE of the Bridge Council and uh, um, uh, I'm sorry, um, uh, the eyelets, yes, the eyelets and different other exams, but unfortunately you have to pay for them. But for the other simple ones, it's for free. And uh, then uh, we discussed the idea of writing, how to help them to do this kind of writing class, how to apply it, uh, if they wanted any help, uh, how to please go ahead. I asked them to, with an assignment, to go and apply it uh, on their work and then give us feedback for this. And by the last week, the fifth week, we just summed up the whole story and, uh, uh, of course, I said the link here for the uh, uh, course, for the session, and this is the link for the EVO. And these are the references. If uh, you want them, you are most welcome for that. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you so much, Maha. Uh, we have a lot of uh, encouraging and kind comments in the chat, and we have one question about your participants. So Christine was wondering, oh, yeah. yeah, tell us about your participants, where they come from, and so on. Thank yes, you. Yes, I, I forgot this while I was discussing. Yes, we, I had about 54 participants. They came from all around the world. They came from Egypt. They came from uh, Italy, Spain, uh, Ukraine. Uh, um, the other side of the world, yes, the South America. We have lots of some South America. They are usually uh, interested in the idea of assessment uh, because they um, over there they usually uh, make changes with the systems of education, and sometimes these systems are not that practical. So they want someone to help them with these. Uh, so uh, we usually discuss things about these, and um, they were very informative about that. Yeah. Any other questions? Some great comments about the tools you've used too. Thank you very much. If you if you want the PowerPoint, you are most welcome. You can just write me back, and I can send it to you. 
Um, um, I, I have also, uh, I will also be sending a copy of uh, the PDF of the presentation to Nelly because I have already presented this on uh, CO22, uh, uh, the course uh, of connecting online, uh, which Nelly had already held uh, last month. So you will find also the copy of the PowerPoint over there. Okay. Uh, thank you, Maha. Thank and you very much. That brings us to the end of today's session. And thank you very much to all the presenters and thank you uh, to everybody in the audience. That's uh, our last session for today, but we have two more tomorrow. I think two more best of evil sessions. Am I right, Nagla? Yes, correct. And uh, okay, it's almost a one hour, 60 minutes in our session and I will stop the recording and I will uh, say goodbye and thank you to all of you and hope to see you all tomorrow.